The front two wheels are stopped right near the edge and I can't decide whether to do it or not. It's one of those big movie canyons. Tall and high and cracked and sandy at the bottom. Its shit dusty mouth calling for the water that made it alive out of the flat desert. Years of work and then left alone. Its colonization dragged to another plane. I used to come here in the summer when I was younger because Mom said they liked that little boy guides show them around. Said it made them feel like they were getting a more authentic experience. I wonder how many of them still remember me. How many memories am I burned into? Whose unconscious do I linger in? The ground underneath is crumbling. The car rolls back just enough. I don't want to go too soon. So much to live for. There really is. I put my foot on the accelerator, but it's still in reverse, so I shoot backwards. I guess not, then. Pick up your brother and be home before sundown. Okay. They said she had something that they didn't know how to fix, so she was coming to live with us for a while. Even then I knew how long that while, that while was. Eternity. Unless you let yourself out. It was bad ever since the first day. Her hooked hands opened, the muscle shifted and raw after years of holding on to something never quite apparent, or at least temporary. She slipped back down the stairs, and I saw her a broken woman. There was no illusion after that. No family trips or house parties or half-birthdays could change anything that I'd seen. I couldn't cross the lawn for fear the blood would rise up out of the paving stones and stain my shoes pink, leaving tiny me-shaped clots with every step I took towards that place. I saw what you don't forget, what time does when its toy is nearly broken, but not quite. It calls its mother, and they fix it a bit. She rubs her white coat on it, and it turns it a few times, and it keeps ticking. It lives forever in that moment, forever until all the teeth break and the machine is useless. Not even fresh cogs or a new lung can fix it. I was seven years old. He climbs straight into the car and keeps his bag on his lap. Our parents called him Derek, but he's not a Derek. I don't know what he is. He does, maybe. Quiet. I call him Edward. He responds. Good. Fine. He responds. Our custom. Did they? No. Did you fight them? No. How then? I told them that my body doesn't matter because my spirit is with God and they can't hurt me there. Good. Edward. Elvis? Yes. Is your spirit with God? No. Why? He'll show you himself. Silence. I doubt he'll speak again. But he asked a question. He never asks questions. Progress or curiosity? It's hard to tell. His hand won't fall from his arm, his fingers working in circles round the inside, clinging to the little warm flap of flesh that rests against him. Like a child who has been immunised. He is a child who has been immunised. I won't get anything out of him by prying. He's gone now. Quiet as always. Silence. The rest of the way home.